Hi folks, I'm Prickett Liu, Infoblox's Chief Evangelist and Senior Fellow. Now the last time we spoke, I promised to talk about Blox1 DDI and protocols. So let's start with DHCP. First, what is DHCP? Well, it's the Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, and it is a critical network service. It's what you might call a provisioning service. But how do you describe what a network provisioning service is or does? Well, some of you may be accustomed to seeing networks drawn like this. The intent is to show you which devices are connected to which networks, and which routers connect networks together. These diagrams are boring, though, and I don't think they're that helpful in explaining DHCP. But what if we look at the network this way? Now it kind of looks like a street map, doesn't it? You see which houses and buildings are on which streets, and what their addresses are. You can figure out how to get from one place to another. If you imagine you were building a new house on a street, say Pine Street, it's up in the upper left, well, first, in networking anyway, you need to know your address. It has to be an address that's valid on your street, not 101 if the addresses on your street run from 1000 to 1999. And it can't be in use by another house, obviously. Then you need to know how to get off your street. Where's the outlet to get to the rest of the city and to the freeway system? You need to know how to connect to utilities. Where do you connect to power, gas, water, the sewer system? That's just like DHCP. It tells a device connecting to a network what its IP address is, how to get off its local network onto the larger network and to the internet, how to get to utility services like DNS and NTP, the internet's time service. Now back when we built NIOS, there was basically only one option for a DHCP server, written by ISC, the Internet Systems Consortium, and called somewhat unimaginatively the ISC DHCP server. And it was written way back in 1999, coincidentally the same year Infoblox was founded. It has been around now, if you do the math, for over 20 years. But when we started working on Blocks 1 DDI, we had other options, and we had Sean Ruthier. Sean was one of the engineers who actually developed the ISC DHCP server, and we asked Sean to investigate and recommend which DHCP server to use in Blocks 1 DDI. And he chose Kia. Well, what the heck is a Kia? It's a kind of parrot from New Zealand, but it's also ISC's newer DHCP server. They started work on it in 2014, so it's much more modern code than the ISC DHCP server. That means it's easier to maintain, it's more secure, it's easier to extend with what they call hooks, and it has higher performance. Sean choosing Kia over the ISC DHCP server is a little bit like the coach choosing your kid over his own to start the game. It's a pretty strong endorsement. Now, here's an important thing about DHCP servers. A given network can only be served by a DHCP server that is expressly configured to handle that network. That's very different from DNS servers, where a recursive DNS server can serve clients on basically any network. But it kind of makes sense for DHCP to hand out the right address to a new house and all that utility information. The DHCP server needs intimate knowledge about that network. And, of course, DHCP servers are super important when you think about it, because without DHCP, you can't get on the network, and you can't get off the network to other destinations. So you can't build your house, you can't get your address, get onto the interstate, connect to power, or anything. But there was one thing that the ISC DHCP server had that Kia lacked, DHCP failover. DHCP failover is a way to have redundant DHCP servers serve a network. Very important, but DHCP failover has its own problems. It's complex, it's actually not a standard, and ISC said we are not implementing this in Kia. So we, which is to say Sean, worked with ISC to come up with new DHCP redundancy mechanisms, which Infoblox also paid ISC to develop, and now everybody who uses Kia can use it. Those DHCP redundancy mechanisms were really useful. You can set up an active-active relationship where each of two DHCP servers handles about half the DHCP clients that are on a network, and one can take over for the other if one fails. Or you can set up an active-passive relationship where the backup DHCP server just synchronizes with the active one and takes over for it if the active one fails. However, these mechanisms also had some drawbacks, performance, for example, and a given DHCP server could only be in one high availability relationship at one time. 
So, for example, you couldn't have two DHCP servers back each other up, which is a very common configuration. And you couldn't have one DHCP server back up a bunch of others, another very common configuration. So Infoblox developed a brand new DHCP high availability mechanism, which we call Advanced Active Passive, or AAP for short. AAP has better performance than Active Active or Active Passive, and a single DHCP server can back up many others, or two can back each other up. And best of all, we're the only ones who have it. We designed it and developed it entirely in-house. It's really cool to have DHCP redundancy. It's so important for such a critical service. But you know what would be even cooler? If any DHCP server could serve clients on any network. We call this idea AnyCast DHCP, and it'll completely change the way DHCP is delivered on our customers' networks. They'll be able to have a single address across all their network to send DHCP clients to. It's like being able to call 411 or 911 or 999 from anywhere on a telephone network. This will be really revolutionary, and revolutions don't come along often in the staid world of DHCP. Thanks again for tuning in, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.